I think he has the first Mercedes electric. So electric now has its Mercedes and it does not have any Mercedes, it has an S-Class. S-Class stands for our flagship. And now on the electric era, we have our flagship, the EQS. Mercedes-Benz is one of the biggest automotive brands in the world, renowned for its luxury and innovation. However, their 2021 launch of the EQS, touted as a Tesla killer, has left the brand reeling. Despite its cutting-edge features, including an all-electric powertrain and futuristic hyperscreen, the EQS has failed to gain traction in the market. With sales plummeting to just 14,100 units in 2023, from a mere 23,400 in 2022, Mercedes's struggles in the electric vehicle EV market have become increasingly apparent. But what went wrong with Mercedes EV strategy? In this video, we explore the Mercedes EV catastrophe and what really happened. So stick around, you don't want to miss this. The launch of the EQS. In early 2021, Mercedes-Benz made headlines with the launch of the EQS, their new electric sedan, poised to rival Tesla's Model S. This was more than just the introduction of another car. It was meant to showcase Mercedes's entry into the future of automotive technology. The excitement was tangible, with industry analysts and consumers eagerly anticipating how Mercedes would merge its legacy of luxury with cutting-edge electric vehicle, EV, technology. Inside the EQS, Mercedes's reputation for luxury was evident. The cabin, a white snow fantasy, featured elegant wood finishes, exquisite stitching, and ambient LED lighting that changed with the driver's mood. The standout feature was the hyperscreen, a 56-inch curved glass panel across the dashboard, integrating navigation, entertainment, and vehicle controls seamlessly. Externally, the EQS took a bold step away from traditional Mercedes designs. To maximize aerodynamics, it featured a smooth egg-like shape, achieving a drag coefficient of just 0.20. This design, while efficient, was not well received by those accustomed to the classic Mercedes elegance. The unconventional appearance didn't appeal to many luxury car buyers. Technologically, the EQS was impressive. It offered a range of up to 478 miles on a single charge and accelerated from 0 to 60 mile per hour in 4.1 seconds. It was packed with driver assistance features like adaptive cruise control and an augmented reality heads-up display. Despite these advancements, the market response was tepid. In 2022, Mercedes only sold 23,400 units of the EQS, with the number dropping to 14,100 in 2023. The high starting price of around $100,000 limited its market appeal. Moreover, the unusual exterior design didn't attract traditional luxury buyers. Another issue was the rapid depreciation, with the car's value dropping by nearly 48% within a year, making it one of the fastest depreciating luxury cars. This deterred potential buyers concerned about long-term value. The EQS's disappointing performance had significant implications for Mercedes-Benz. The heavy investment in the EQ lineup was supposed to position Mercedes as a leader in the EV market. However, the poor reception of the EQS raised doubts about their strategy and competitiveness against more innovative companies like Tesla. The broader EQ lineup. The broader EQ lineup was Mercedes-Benz's ambitious venture into the electric vehicle market following the introduction of the EQS. The lineup included models such as the EQB, EQE, and the high-end EQS Maybach. Despite the variety, they all faced similar challenges that hindered their success. The EQB was Mercedes-Benz's attempt to electrify the compact SUV market. Sharing the same aerodynamic egg-shaped design philosophy as the EQS, it aimed at maximizing efficiency. However, this design approach continued to draw criticism. The sleek, rounded aesthetics were perceived as unattractive by many traditional Mercedes-Benz customers, who preferred the brand's more classic and commanding presence. Although practical and equipped with the latest technology, the EQB failed to generate significant interest, leading to underwhelming sales figures. The EQE, positioned as a mid-sized luxury electric sedan, 
followed the same design trajectory. Despite boasting advanced features and a commendable range, its exterior design was again a point of contention. Potential buyers accustomed to the elegance and sophistication of Mercedes-Benz's internal combustion models were unimpressed by the EQE's modern but somewhat uninspired look. Sales of the EQE mirrored the disappointing performance of its sibling models, further highlighting the misalignment between Mercedes-Benz's design direction and customer expectations. The EQS Maybach, intended to be the pinnacle of electric luxury, also struggled to capture the market's imagination. Priced at around $180,000, it was packed with luxurious features and state-of-the-art technology. However, its design did not reflect the opulence typically associated with the Maybach name. The smooth, almost featureless exterior failed to resonate with buyers who expected a more extravagant and visually striking vehicle. Consequently, the EQS Maybach did not perform as well as anticipated, adding to the woes of the broader EQ lineup. The electric G-Wagon, the EQG, deserves special mention. The G-Wagon is one of Mercedes-Benz's most iconic models, known for its boxy, rugged design and off-road capabilities. The introduction of an electric version was met with cautious optimism. However, the EQG faced the same design criticisms as the other EQ models. Although it retained some of the classic G-Wagon characteristics, the attempt to modernize it with smooth lines and futuristic elements did not sit well with many enthusiasts. The EQG's design was seen as a departure from what made the G-Wagon special, leading to skepticism and lukewarm market reception. While Mercedes-Benz aimed to position itself at the forefront of electric vehicle innovation, it overlooked the importance of preserving the elements that made its cars desirable in the first place. This misalignment ultimately hindered the success of the EQ lineup and highlighted the challenges of transitioning to electric mobility while maintaining a strong brand identity. Leadership changes and strategic shifts. Now, partially, the design and market missteps can be attributed to leadership changes at Mercedes-Benz. The retirement of CEO Dieter Zetscher in 2019 marked the end of an era. Zetscher, known for his distinctive white moustache, had been with Daimler since 1976 and served as CEO since 2006. He led Mercedes through significant challenges, including the 2008 financial crisis and helped the company surpass BMW to become the top-selling premium car maker in 2016. Zetsch's leadership was steady, focusing on reinforcing Mercedes-Benz's reputation for luxury and engineering excellence. However, as Zetsch retired, the automotive industry was shifting towards electrification and digitalization. Ola Schellenius, appointed as his successor, was seen as a progressive leader capable of guiding Mercedes through this transformative period. Schellenius, who had been with Mercedes-Benz since the early 1990s, had a strong background in research and development, making him well-suited to drive innovation. Schellenius took charge during a critical time, with the pressure to innovate mounting. Tesla's rise and the growing popularity of EV startups like Rivian and Lucid set new standards for the industry. Tesla's Cybertruck announcement in late 2019, which garnered massive pre-orders, highlighted the increasing consumer interest in electric vehicles. This put traditional automakers like Mercedes-Benz under immense pressure to adapt quickly. Schellenius needed to prove his leadership while keeping Mercedes-Benz competitive in the EV market. One of Schellenius's major initiatives was to accelerate Mercedes-Benz's electrification efforts. This included plans to invest $60 billion in electric vehicle development and a pledge to go all electric by 2030. The launch of the EQS in 2021 was a significant part of this strategy. Schellenius aimed to position Mercedes-Benz as a leader in luxury electric vehicles, leveraging its heritage of innovation and quality. However, executing this strategy proved challenging. The EQ lineup faced criticism for design choices and market performance. The aerodynamic but unconventional designs didn't resonate with many traditional Mercedes-Benz customers, resulting in disappointing sales. Schellenius's tenure has been marked by ambitious goals and pragmatic adjustments. And while the journey has been challenging, 
he is committed to guiding Mercedes-Benz through this transformative period. The EQ disaster provided valuable lessons, emphasizing the need to balance innovation with customer expectations and brand heritage. In response to these challenges, Chalenius began rethinking their strategy. They started to phase out the EQ branding, acknowledging its flaws. Dealers were informed, and the company shifted towards rebranding its electric vehicles to align more closely with traditional models, like renaming the electric G-Wagon from EQG to G580 with EQ technology. Mercedes also offered design options that were more in line with their classic models, addressing feedback about the unattractive designs. They have also decided that the EQ lineup will not drag them down, so they are ditching it entirely. The company announced its decision to phase out the EQ branding to better align with customer expectations. Industry analysts weren't surprised, having closely watched the brand's struggles with the EQ lineup. The new approach now involves offering electric versions of popular models like the S-Class, E-Class and G-Class without compromising on the design elements that appealed to their core customer base. This includes options to maintain traditional grille designs, wheel cases and interior layouts, ensuring that the electric variants stay true to the brand's identity. This strategic pivot was well received, signalling that Mercedes-Benz was listening to customer feedback and willing to adapt. The rebranded electric models are beginning to show more promising signs in terms of market reception and sales. By focusing on what they did best, luxury, performance and design, Mercedes-Benz now aims to regain its footing in the competitive EV market. Their long-term goal to achieve a fully electric lineup by 2030 is still on track, significantly reducing emissions and maintaining a strong market presence in the luxury automotive sector. Mercedes-Benz is committed to investing in cutting-edge battery technology and enhancing the driving range and performance of its electric vehicles. So, what are your thoughts on the Mercedes EV catastrophe? Do you think they can bounce back from these challenges? Comment below and let us know your opinion. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth analysis and automotive news. Until next time, stay tuned and thanks for watching.